church how are we all doing this morning i've got to say i'm really missing being in the church building with all of you guys but it is great that we are making the most of this and that we still got to come together every sunday so who's ready for an amazing sunday service this morning we've got sean preaching and it's just going to be an amazing time that we have together so how about you leave a like a comment yes yeah, this way leave a comment uh, and tell us who's watching and if you're on your own and because the, the rest of the family is still asleep But at least you come down to watch so it's great that you've done that Also, if you're watching on Facebook, you can share this message with others 
um, and why not invite a friend as well? Either right now, get them ready for the service, or if you want to invite them next week, that would be great as well. Um, now we're going to go into a quick worship time. Obviously it's a little bit different than normal, but again, we're still making the most of it. So I would encourage you to join in, um, raising your hands in your living room or your dining room, wherever you are, your bedroom, good on you. Um, or sing along if you, if you feel comfortable to, or just meditate on the words a bit and, and let it reach inside your soul and let God do something within you. So come on, let's worship together this morning.
great song. Are we all feeling energized this morning? Well, in the spirit of raising your spirits, we're now going to go into a time of prayer and praise. We have a video to show you in a minute, but in this church we really believe that prayer does work and when we pray together we can see amazing things happen. Um, there are people in this church that want to pray for you uh, and if you have anything that you need prayer for, whether that be for your current your situation or for people that you know who are working in the NHS or are in hospitals at the moment or they just need help in this dire situation that we all find ourselves in, get in touch with us um, and we can get that prayer to you that you need because we are a family. Um, so let's watch this video and feel inspired because isn't it amazing when prayer gets answered. Good morning everyone. I'd like to uh, share a short testimony this morning and I thought the best way to do it was through my diary. This is my up-to-date diary and I'm starting on Saturday the 4th of April. My words are absolutely gutted. Ruth, my daughter-in-law, just in my son, they both have the symptoms of coronavirus. Ruth is so worried about Justin, he's very pale and has tightness in his chest. Sunday the 5th of April. Both resting, Ruth sleeping a lot, Justin is feeling a little better. Obviously we're all praying as a family. Uh, Ruth's parents, they're Christians, they were praying too. Yet on the Monday, Justin was so much worse. Ruth was so worried about him. She contacted me and said how worried she was about him. The next day I went on WhatsApp and I put a, we've got um, prayer groups on there and I put my request in for Justin and Ruth and the girls. And straight away I got some responses, a few responses, but throughout the day I got so many responses. And of course as a mum I was so worried and yet I started to feel better and I knew that they were praying for me as well as for Justin and Ruth and the girls. So the symptoms hadn't changed but yet I felt better. On the Thursday, uh, Wednesday sorry, I got the message that Justin's symptoms were easing a little. I got the same message on the Thursday, then on the Friday the same, and Saturday they were feeling a little bit better. Ruth feeling quite a bit better. On the Sunday, which was Easter Sunday, Justin is feeling much better. Ruth is better, such a relief. So grateful to God for answering our prayers and for his faithfulness at this time and so thankful for all of you 
who are praying for them. Thank you so much. Wow, isn't that such a powerful message? It's so amazing to see what God does in people's lives. So now we're going to go into a bit of time of prayer. If you want to raise your hands or just close your eyes uh, and just be a part of this moment now together as a collective. And there's just a message that I want to share with you guys uh, about prayer. So in the book of Acts, um, there's a story of when Peter and John were put in prison um, for believing in God because at this time Christianity um, was a crime. Uh, and when they were released from prison, um, they got a prayer group together and prayed for their, the first church and also for the people in their society. And this is what they said. They said, Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your words with great boldness. Stretch out your hands to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. That's from Acts 4, verses 29 to 30. And it's just amazing to me because they just got out of prison for their boldness and now they're asking God for more of it. And I think that's what we need to do. In this, in this time, this pandemic where everything seems to be lost, we can pray and we believe that things can be changed. Things can turn around in radical ways. So let's pray together now um, for everyone dealing with COVID-19, people that have it, people that are in dangerous situations for it, and just pray for the entire world for a speedy recovery um, that we can get through this and we will get through this and we are over the curve now and we, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. That's great. And even though we're apart, we still can pray together and it still does make a difference. Um, so thank you guys for being a part of that. Now we're going to go into a, sec a new section called Lockdown Life. Uh, every week we're going to have someone or a family explain to us a little bit about what they're doing during their lockdown, their routines and how they're stopping themselves from going insane. Um, and this week we're, Tim and Kate Davis are kicking that off. So. It's going to be awesome. Let's watch that together, guys. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, we just wanted to take this opportunity um, to speak to everybody and just um, tell you a little bit about what life is like under lockdown in the Davis household um, since we've been under lockdown for about six, six weeks now. Um, and first of all to say we're really missing everybody and uh, really missing getting together on Sundays and in the week and uh, really missing uh, seeing all you guys um, but we thought it'd be good to just give you a, a quick update yeah so uh, Monday to Friday we're, we're quite organized got quite a big routine going on so we get up and dressed get going with homeschooling, um, got some study books from Amazon to help them with that. Um, and yeah, they're doing pretty well and I'm learning a lot as well, so that's a bonus. Um, but yeah, we do we do a session of school, we do P with Joe Wicks, we do more school, uh, we do some Bible time and some praying time. We have lunch as well, uh, we go for a walk in the afternoon and then they kind of chill out and play after that. So. Quite, quite a varied and full day, um, but yeah, it's uh, it's all good. It's, it's keeping us going, I think, having a routine and a structure. Um, and then the weekends? Yeah, uh, so the weekends are really, really uh, great for me because I found, I found uh, this lockdown really, really intense, um, especially at first from a work perspective. Um, because the company I work for uh, had to close all their operations, uh, factories, head office and everything and send everybody home and that was the biggest um, financial challenge that we've had in the last 50 years. Uh, so it was a really, really intense time of discussing uh, with banks how we would get through this, our shareholders. Um, we're just starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel now. 
um, and uh, that's easing up a bit. But for me, um, the, the first few weeks were really intense. So despite working from home, um, it was really, really difficult time. Uh, I'm pleased to say now I'm just I'm starting to get used to it. Um, working from home is easier now than it was at the beginning. Um, but weekends are a real uh, chance to have a break and um, trying to trying to really find all the positives that we can uh, through this lockdown situation. Um, it's it's great that we can spend so much more family time together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sam and Lucy uh, really appreciate the fact that where our weekends previously were really, really busy, um, now we've just got so much more time just to spend all together as a family. Uh, so we make sure we get out uh, for a good walk every day over the weekends and, um, and we have a fried breakfast every Saturday morning uh, something to look forward to during the week um, and we're just spending so much more time together as a family um, as I say especially over the weekends so it's really really good time and we love um, we love tuning in and watching uh, church on mm. on Sunday mornings as well that's that's a real highlight mm. uh, so yeah that's that's something that's been really good um, and uh, also I'm not having to commute to work and back which is saving a bit of time every day in the week so that's really good as well so just to uh, just to finish off, uh, I read this today uh, in my Bible reading devotional notes, and it's Isaiah twenty six three. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. And it was talking all about how life is an adventure and how sometimes the adventure of life doesn't go exactly the way that we planned, doesn't fit the road map that we thought we were following, but. God is still the path that we take and he is still in control and he's still in our lives and he can do amazing things in us and through us and that really blessed me and it was just another reminder again just these daily reminders just to trust him and to look to him in everything um, so that was great and I hope that blesses you as well. So we really look forward to seeing you all again soon and hopefully this lockdown will be over soon. So we'll see you later. Lots of love. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Tim and Kate. That was really cool to see. So now we're going to go into our preach for this morning. Um, so like I said before, Shana's preaching and I, for one, am really excited because she always brings an incredible message. So enjoy, guys. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're doing well. We're missing you a lot. I just want to share with you a few thoughts this morning about what it could look like to have a more godly perspective over our lives. I read an article the other day by someone who was trying to argue that if we'd have had widespread media across multiple platforms with all kinds of different voices the way that we do today, that the Allies would have lost the Second World War. Their point was that uh, when media is controlled, when it's positive, when it supports uh, government ideals, that, that helped us to win the war, whereas today we're constantly bombarded with a minefield of different information, different sources, some of which are true, some of which are grossly exaggerated, some of which are false, lots of which are negative. But the truth is the story that we tell ourselves is the one that counts, the one that matters, the way we frame stuff in our mind and in our thinking, the voice that we hear in our hearts and in our heads is the one that shouts the loudest. And the one that counts the most in terms of how we live and how we think and how we perceive stuff and how we respond. In the book of Exodus in the Bible, we read about the Israelite nation. They went from being locked up in slavery in the country of Egypt to seeing God perform miracle after miracle after miracle to set them free and promise them their own land. And as they walked through the wilderness toward that land that God had promised them, they were finally free, free from Egypt, free to live, free to work, free to choose, free to be. After hundreds and hundreds of years in slavery, all it took to set them free was God. See, sometimes we overestimate what people can do, and what people can do for us and, and in our lives, but we underestimate what God can do. We underestimate 
are incredible. God can do for us and in us and through us. They could have been in that situation another 400 years, but God, but God, in just months, all it took was our miracle working God to step in. One burning bush, 10 miraculous plagues, and one ocean parted in two to set them free. 400 years of gruelling slavery under complete Egyptian control, outmatched by a God that we can never and should never underestimate. So it took just months for God to get the entire nation free from the country of Egypt, but it took 40 years to get Egypt out of them. Another 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, trying to reach that promised land that God had given to them because they were not ready in their own hearts and in their minds to put their faith and trust in God. Just think about that for a moment. It was easier for God to get an entire nation out of a dictatorship where they were being held captive as slaves than it was for him to get them to just change their minds, to change their mindset, to change the story that they were telling themselves. The true battleground of our lives happens right here in our mind. It's what goes on in our thinking, the story we tell ourselves, the story we live in. It makes a difference to our reality. I'm not just talking today about the power of positive thinking, although thinking positively does have power and does help you, but I'm actually talking about the power of godly thinking, the power of taking negative thoughts captive, of silencing the lies, of fear and doubt, and continuing to live in the power of trusting God. Paris, our eldest daughter, learned to swim. She's been having lessons since she was about three years old. And she learned in a shallow pool and she soon got the badge for five meters and 10 meters swimming without any floats or armbands and not touching the floor. When we moved to Worksop, she started to have lessons at Worksop College Swimming Pool and the water there is deep. So the water she has her lesson in is eight foot deep. So when we got to these swimming lessons, she just decided in her mind, I can't swim. I can't get across the water without my feet touching the floor. Now we knew that she could. We had the evidence that she could. We had all these badges and certificates that she'd got over the past three years showing that she could swim without touching the bottom. A teacher watched her swim and believed that she could, but she just decided in her mind, I can't swim. I can't get from one side to the other. And it, because the water's so deep to help them with their endurance there, they have like a float on their back. So she had three floats on her back. And after a few weeks of this, the teacher said, you know, she doesn't need these floats. She should go down to one float and she took them off. Paris got into the water. This was the start of the lesson. Set off across the pool. She got halfway across and just stopped kicking, stopped swimming and started to drown. And the poor teacher had to dive in, fully clothed, and rescue it. It was so embarrassing from the side. I was like, oh my gosh, it's mortifying. We run over, obviously, to check Karis is okay. She's fine, the teacher's a little bit shaken. Afterwards, we said to Karis, what happened? You know, why did you stop swimming? She said, I just thought, I don't don't think I can do it. I don't think I can get to the other side, so I just stopped kicking my legs. I didn't think I could do it, so I just stopped trying. The story we tell ourselves is so important. She has the evidence that she can swim. She swum before. We think she can do it. Her teacher thinks she can do it. But in her mind, she just decided, I can't get to the other side. And she just stopped trying and started to drown. So often, we live more like the Israelite people than we care to realise. We've experienced what it means to know Jesus and to follow him, but we don't always live in the light of that. We live the way we always have, and when problems and trials come along, just as they did for the Israelites in the wilderness, we start to forget our incredible God, and we start to put our focus on the narrative that the world is sharing. The truth is, if you know Jesus today, you already have a new nature, but maybe, just maybe, you need to start creating a new normal. If you know Jesus today, you already have a new heart. But maybe, just maybe, you need to start cultivating some new habits. See, God set the Israelites free from slavery, but in their hearts, they were still slaves. They were slaves to fear, slaves to worry, 
slaves to the known, to the extent that several times whilst they were in the wilderness, they wished themselves back in Egypt, wished themselves back in slavery, rather than free in the desert. When we see the Israelites encounter problems, their first thought isn't to go back to the God who had just parted the sea for them, but rather to go back to the comfort of the known, the comfort of their old nature, their old hearts, their old habits to moan and complain. And we can be like that. We'd rather be back in the comfort of what we know, no matter how bad it was, than push forward into something new and push forward into what God has for us. But we are called to a kingdom that is set apart from this world, where we no longer bow down to the way the world says it's going to be, where we no longer put our hope and our trust in what people can do, but instead we put our hope and trust in the God of the impossible. The problem the Israelites face is that even though they had seen God work miracle after miracle in their lives, they soon quickly forgot to live in that reality. They soon slipped back into their old patterns of thinking, their old normal. Maybe that's true for you today. Maybe you've got memories deep down somewhere of what Jesus has done for you. You've got the evidence all around you, even as we've heard this morning, of the miracles he can work, of the prayers he can answer. But the reality is every day you're battling to live in that truth. In Numbers 13, God says to Moses, send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites. And the first thing to point out here is that God didn't say, go and explore that land over there. Go and see what's over that hill. Go and see if that land is good and I'll see whether I can get it for you. He said, go and explore the land that I am giving to you. Go and check out the gift I've already got for you. So they sent leaders from each of the tribes to look, but when they came back, looking from looking at the land God had given to them, all of the spies, apart from Joshua and Caleb, gave a bad report. They complained of giants in the land. They were afraid they wouldn't be able to capture it. In verse 31, they said, we can't attack those people. They're stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land. They said, the land we explored devours those living in it. All the people living there are of a great size. We saw Nephilim there. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes and we looked the same to them. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes and we looked the same to them. I just want to share with you this morning three things not to do when you're facing a challenge from this report. The number one is don't spread a bad report. We're called to be bearers of good news. The world has enough scaremongers and prophets of doom and that's not a call on us. We're not called to be prophets of doom but carriers of hope, carriers of a new kingdom, of a new way of living. We're sharing the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. So don't let your story in a time of crisis become one of despair. Don't spread a bad report to everyone else. Number two, don't exaggerate the facts. They said all the people we saw there were giants. That's not true. We read earlier in the passage, if you read in Numbers 13, that some of the people there were giants, but loads of them were just ordinary people. And we know as we read on in the story and they actually go on to conquer the land, not all the people there were giants, but the report they came back with was all of the people we saw there are giants. They're all massive in size. That's exaggerating the facts. Don't exaggerate the facts when you find yourself in a bad situation, a bad circumstance. Number three, don't perceive a false perspective. The Israelites had no idea how the people of the land felt about them. We see later on as they do go into the promised land and begin to take it over, that many of the Canaanite people who lived there were afraid of the Israelites because they knew that God had given the land into their hands. But instead, the spies come back perceiving a false perspective. They say they saw themselves as grasshoppers and said, we looked the same to them. But they were not grasshoppers. They were the army of the living God. And the other side didn't necessarily perceive them as grasshoppers. They were even afraid of them because they knew God had given the land into their hands. What has God promised you? Cling on to those words. Don't spread a bad report. Don't exaggerate the problems you're facing. Don't perceive a false perspective, but rather pursue a godly perspective. 
pursue a godly perspective, start to focus on some of the amazing truths we read in the Bible. I will not be shaken. I will not die. Instead, I will live to tell what the Lord has done. When I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. Remember, we often overestimate what people can achieve and underestimate what God can do. After this bad report was spread by the spies, the whole community raised their voices and wept aloud. They all grumbled against Moses and Aaron, their leaders, and said to them, if only we had died in Egypt or in the wilderness. That is the power of a bad report, the strength of a bad report. These people have been rescued from slavery, provided for in every miraculous way in the wilderness, with food literally falling from heaven. They experienced miracle after miracle, yet they hear one bad report and suddenly wish themselves dead, wish they were already dead, wish they had died in slavery. They even go on to say to themselves, let's choose another leader who will take us back to Egypt. Let's find for ourselves someone else who will take us back to the comfort of what we knew. Yeah, it kind of sucked. Yeah, we were slaves. Yeah, we never got paid. We got treated harshly, but we'd rather be back there or dead than facing this bad report. A bad report plus some exaggeration and a false perspective made them perceive a problem that didn't even really exist. Wish themselves dead, try to find new leadership, try to get back to what they had known. See, they were out of Egypt, but Egypt was very much still in them. They had a new heart, but they needed new habits. But Joshua and Caleb, the only two of the Israelites who would actually go on to enter the Promised Land, recognize the truth of God in that situation. In Numbers 14 verse 9 they say this, do not be afraid of the people in that land because we will devour them. Their protection is gone but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. That's a godly perspective on the situation. Yeah there might be people already living there. Yes yeah, some of them might even be giants but my God has promised us that land and he has promised to be with us with every step that we take. What situation do you find yourself in today? What report are you making to yourself, to your friends and to your family? Because before you make it, remember this, we are the God who has promised to never leave us or forsake us. He has said, do not be afraid, but be strong and courageous. He has promised to be with you in the valley of the shadow of death, to comfort to provide for you, to sustain you, to give you a peace that passes understanding, to hem you in behind and before, to fight for you, to be your strength, to hear your prayers, to draw close to you, and so much more. He said, though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed. That's the God we should be looking to the God we are leaning on, the God we are putting our trust in, the God we can never ever underestimate because he is that good, he is that amazing, he is that powerful, that's our God. So I'm not seeing myself as a grasshopper in anybody's eyes. I'm not seeing myself as a grasshopper in the eyes of coronavirus, in the eyes of the world, because my God is that awesome. Joyce Mayer, a well-known a Christian preacher, she said, responsibility is our response to God's ability. It's our responsibility as followers of Jesus to tell the story of God's ability, to live lives that reflect it, that respond as though we really believe it. And the Apostle Paul writes this in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. Thoughts that put other powers higher than God are actually idolatrous thoughts, things that exalt things over God. 
they say my boss or my health report or coronavirus are bigger than my God and their thoughts that are not true and thoughts that need to be taken captive and made obedient to Christ. I love this translation of the verse, this interpretation of it from the Passion Translation. It says this, we can demolish every deceptive fantasy that opposes God and break through every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of God. We capture, like prisoners of war, every thought and insist that it bow down to the anointed one. What story are you telling yourself? What narrative are you speaking in your home, over your kids and about your circumstance today? When you feel overwhelmed with worry or anxiety, remember you control your thinking and those thoughts need to bow down in obedience to Jesus Christ. They need to be taken captive like prisoners and reminded we are no longer hearts that hold on to habits of this world. We have new natures that conform to a new norm and we are storytellers, not of bad reports, but of the greatest kingdom that ever was and ever will be. And that's why we love to hear your stories of answered prayer. It's why it's so important for each one of us to be reading our Bible each day and spending time talking to Jesus every day. One of the new habits of a new heart that we need to cultivate also is in our thought life. Some people like me are naturally cynical, some are pessimists, but whatever you think your natural thinking pattern is, some of us need to change that. We need to take on a new habit, a new way of thinking, not reading at every negative news story and sharing it on our social media, not always thinking of the doom and gloom and the what ifs, but focusing on the truths of the Bible, the truths of who God says he is. And I know some of you listening today, and you don't know Jesus, and you feel like you are living in that bad report, and there is no light at the end of the tunnel. The truth is I have no more clue than the next one of you, what is gonna happen with the spread of coronavirus in our nation and across the world, what's gonna happen with the development of a vaccine, with the lockdown, with the economy. But I do know that I serve a God who knows the end from the beginning who is the author of peace and who invites you to know him today. If you want a new nature, a new way of being, if you want to find new life, he offers all of that to you today. We want to help you discover Jesus as your personal friend and saviour. If that's you and you want to know more, you want to accept Jesus, just hit DM on Facebook, comment, or you can make uh, press the button on our online platform. We would love to send a free gift to you. We'd love to pray with you. We'd love for you to be able to know the peace that comes from knowing Jesus, the light and the hope that comes from having him in your life. Second of all, I know some of you listening today know Jesus, but we still feel gripped by anxiety. And we want to pray for you too. We want to pray for peace, for courage, and for strength and comfort for you. We want to pray that the light at the end of the tunnel burns stronger in you today. So wherever you are, whatever kind of place you feel you're in today, I want to invite you right now to join with me as we pray. And when we pray, we're inviting that same God that we've talked about, that same God of the Bible, his very living presence into our hearts and lives as we pray and we know he's a miracle working God and we know that as we invite him into our lives he can make a difference so why not wherever you are right now close your eyes and just take a moment to breathe in his presence Jesus Father, as we sit in your presence, we breathe out fear and we breathe in hope. We breathe out worries and anxieties and we breathe in you and faith. We're sorry for the times we haven't put our faith and trust in you. We're sorry for the times we haven't lived out the good news story that you have given to us. 
We're so thankful for who you are. We're so thankful that you are a miracle working, life giving, hope breathing God. We're so thankful that you know each one of us intimately and love us so deeply. Lord, for anyone who is battling anxiety today, we pray for peace. For anyone struggling to hold on to hope, we ask that you reveal more of yourself and more of the truth of who you are. For each one of us, Lord, we ask that you help us to be brave, to be courageous and to tell a different story. Amen. Awesome. Thank you, Sean. That was such an amazing message. We all got our God fill for the week now. <laughs> I would say let's all give Sean a round of applause, but she wouldn't know or hear us if we did. Um, so, but amazing. Well done, Sean. That was so, so good. Uh, so now we're going to go into our offering. Um, if you are new here, this is not for you. This is just for people who call Now Church their home. Uh, and we believe that giving is such a massive part of our faith. Um, and God rewards that. But God also does incredible things with the money that we give. So let's be generous, guys. You can give online on the website somewhere around here. Um, or through Church Suite or through Standing Order as well. So there are many ways for you to do that. Awesome. Also, if you want to get in touch with us you can get in there for praise reports like i said earlier or anything you want to talk to us about you can get in touch with us at hello that's at 18 not at the symbol hello at nowchurch.org.uk just need to stop speaking uh, or you can get in touch with us on Facebook as well. Uh, if you are new, we have a gift that we would like to give to you. So please get in touch with us so we can do that. Awesome. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, I hope you've had an amazing service. I know I have. Um, and we will see you again soon. So awesome. Have a great week, guys. Like a melody gives me faith, so I sing. Oh, here I am, come take control. I want your will, not my own. If there's one thing that I know, it's that my God will never let me go. Oh, oh, oh. I know my God is always in control. Oh. I know, I know, I know